Colorado, the thriving metropolis. Uh, we are really excited about this morning's webinar. About four months ago, uh, Mary Faith Williams contacted us here at Piano Marvel and said, I'm working on a thesis on sight reading. I want to figure out what makes amazing sight readers. And so uh, she asked us if she could use the standard assessment of sight reading on about 44 of her students. And we said, absolutely. And so uh, as long as you can share the uh, information with, uh, with us after you're finished with uh, the project. And so she did that, and it was amazing. We actually, uh, Mary and I actually presented uh, the entire information at NCKP this year, and the teachers were very excited about that information. We had many teachers come up afterwards that weren't able to participate, and they said, where do I get the information? We said, too late. So now here's their opportunity. Here's a live webinar that they can uh, can see and understand how to use the standard assessment of sight reading in their individual studios to improve their students' sight reading. And so with no further ado, we're gonna bring in Mary Faith Williams. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna have her introduce herself and uh, what, where she's teaching at a college and a private level and have her jump right into her information. Thanks for being on, Mary. All right, thank you, Sean. And as Sean said, my name is Mary Faith Williams and I'm very delighted to be with all of you and to share what's happened this summer in my piano studio. It's been an amazing summer, and I think everyone needs to know about it. So let me just first give you a little bit of a background about myself. Um, currently, I'm working on my master's from Bob Jones University, and I teach at the Falls Baptist Music School, which is a rather large music school in southeastern Wisconsin. And on our and on a given week in our building, we have over 500 music lessons that take place, private lessons, group lessons, helper lessons, ensembles, all kinds of events. There's a lot of music in every part of our building. And I teach and head up the pre-college piano department and also work in the college piano department. And I teach all levels of piano students from beginner students all the way up through college students. Um, I am the youngest of six musical children and my parents were very committed to all of us having development all the way along. I started violin at age three, participated in choirs from preschool all the way through college, and piano was what I wanted to start more than anything, but I was delayed in starting that, and I'll tell you why. My parents were very uh, committed, like I said, to finding the best teachers they could possibly find in the Midwest. Um, they searched high and low. In fact, my father drove my sister seven hours one way each week for a violin lesson because he was determined that she would take from the best violin teacher he could find. Well, thankfully, they were able to find a piano teacher in the Milwaukee area, so we didn't have to go such a long distance. They found a teacher with great student success and wanted each of us to take from that studio. Well, when it came time for me to take piano lessons, unfortunately, this teacher had a rule that they would not take more than four from one family at a time, and I would have been the fourth from our family at that time to take piano lessons, and so I was not able to start, and I was heartbroken, very disappointed. I wanted to play piano more than anything in the world, and so I did. I just went ahead and played piano by myself. I figured if nobody's going to teach me, I'm going to teach myself, and so I started playing by ear and listening to what my siblings did and copied them and playing all the time, and my, my siblings begged my parents, please make it stop. They were pretty sick of all my creations that I was always coming up with. But finally, after much prayer, um, my teacher finally allowed me to start taking from her, changed her rule just for me, and I started taking piano lessons. And she found out within a very short period of time that my ear was very developed, and I could hear a song and play a song. And within a year, she caught on pretty fast that I was not sight reading at all. And so she told, she sat me down with my mother and she said, if Mary is not sight reading by the end of the summer, I'm going to drop her. And that was the greatest motivation that I could have possibly been given because I had waited so long to take piano lessons. I was not about to be dropped from this piano studio. And so my mom and I sat down every single day with flashcards, everything we could think of to help me become a good sight reader. And 
in a short period of time, not only was I doing well with sight reading, I was absolutely loving it and devouring every piece of music that I could possibly find. In fact, I remember so many times as a young middle school student pretending that I was in a sight reading competition. I always wished that there was some sort of sight reading Olympics or something like that. And I would gather up music and I would pretend I was in the final rounds of this competition. And if I made over a few mistakes, then I would be eliminated. And so I would make myself focus and see if I could sight read. And that was something I would do all the time. I would pretend I was in sight reading competitions. Little did I know that I would come in contact with Piano Marvel and Sasser one day that kind of does have a built-in sight reading test and competition that I could do for myself and for my students. But more about that later. So I, as a young teenager, began teaching piano lessons and didn't fully know what I was doing. So I just depended heavily on the the current method books that were out there and was constantly just assessing to see how are my piano students doing and I made technique a real important focus because my teacher had made that important for me and over the first couple years my students were doing okay and played well but it always happened right around the intermediate level that students would either lose interest or just become too hard and they would want to quit and I kept assessing, why is this happening? What's going on? What am I doing wrong? And I compared it with how I had been trained. I compared it with the very successful string program that is at our music school and began to notice some difference between how I was teaching as a piano teacher following piano methods and how the different successful teachers were teaching. And I noticed a few things. And I had a light bulb moment when I was at a actually a string teachers workshop at Indiana University. I was the piano, I was the pianist, accompanist for this clinic, and a couple things really impacted me. First one being that often with successful string teaching, students are taught a piece that's far above their sight reading level. But the reason they're able to master it is they're taught to break it down to the most basic skill set, master those skills, those new skills, and learn a piece. And taught how to practice correctly. Another thing I noticed about the difference between violinists and pianists was that since violinists um, are using a totally different kind of motion and using a bow, they're able to do eighth notes, 16th notes right off the bat. That's a big motion for them. Whereas pianists, it's a much finer motion for us to play 16th notes and to play eighth notes. And so often the piano method books wait for a while before they incorporate eighth notes, 16th notes. So I was just noticing all these different things and trying to think, well, how can I incorporate all of this for my students? So I began writing a method book and searching high and low for quality piano pieces that I could include and incorporate and also started incorporating improvisational skills, teaching them scales and improv around the circle of fifths in every key right off the bat, teaching them in pentatonic scale positions. Well, all of that was really helping my studio and I was excited, but I knew there was still more I wanted to see and more I wanted to test. Well, when I began my master's three semesters ago, I knew that I really wanted to challenge the common piano teacher philosophy that you teach students how to play the piano by teaching them to play according to what they can read and making reading absolutely the first thing. So when students play, they often think, oh, I can read this song, I can turn the page. Whereas they, they, they miss all of the elements of mastery and technique and then they hit a wall when they get to the intermediate phase and they think, oh, I can't sight read this anymore. You know what? I'm going to give up. Piano's too hard. So I began thinking there's got to be a different way to approach this. And I started doing a lot of background research with all the different literature on the topic of sight reading and started seeing some themes, some important things such as teaching piano like how we would teach a language. If you think about it, a little youngster, a little two-year-old, is starting to explore even before that with the English language. And we encourage that with our children. We want to hear them try to make sounds and say daddy and mama and all those things. And we don't stop them from speaking just because they cannot read. Well, in the same way with piano, we want to encourage our students to play and to speak the language of music even before or maybe even at a higher level than what they're sight reading. And this process can happen really naturally 
um, things like sound before symbol, the principle um, that you've probably come across in music education, different things like that were really beginning to click with me. So I spent several semesters collecting um, just a lot of research and refining my topic with my professor. And then finally landed on a very specific purpose statement and a qualitative case study that I wanted to embark on to, to test this. And so I'm going to switch over to my slides here so that you all can see uh, my presentation. And I'm going to share with you what happened this summer. All right, so as you can see, um, my theme for my whole studio was how much could my piano students improve in seven weeks? How much could they improve in sight reading? Um, how much would my beginners improve? And then beyond that, how much would all of my students improve? So the specific purpose of my action research project pertaining to beginner pianists, those who had never taken piano before. My purpose was to determine how teaching technical exercises, solos, and ear training above the student's current sight reading level would affect their beginner piano student sight reading achievement. And so in other words, I was testing, am I going to hurt or am I going to help my students by separating out sight reading as a separate skill set instead of letting it be the determining factor of all the music I would use. So instead of, if they could sight read it, I would incorporate it. Instead of making that the point, I would teach them improv and I would teach them solos that were beyond their sight reading level. And then I was a separate skill area, just like ear training is, or just like other skills are. I wanted to make sight reading an important skill area, but not that which determined the level at which we were playing. And I wanted to see, is this going to help or is this going to hurt? Well, you know, how do you test this? Or how do you even see improvement in your studio if you don't even know what level you're at? And that was my problem. I needed to find an objective standardized sight reading test for my pre-test and my post-test for my case study. And I knew that I had to find something. I didn't know, you know, do I do I make up my own test? Do I use a, you know, the Whatcom Sparnum performance scale test? Do, what do I use? And the different tests I were finding just were not adaptable for piano. And I didn't want to make one up myself. Um, so I kept looking and I came in contact with Piano Marvel and the Sasser test which I was very excited about. And the Sasser test is truly the answer for a researcher, piano researcher like, like me, like I was this past summer. And I was very excited to have the opportunity to use the Sasser for my beginner students as well as my whole studio. And you can learn about the Sasser test if you go to YouTube. If you, if you don't know about Sasser, the standard assessment of sight reading, I would encourage you to pause the video for a moment and to go to YouTube, type in what is Sasser, and take a look at what it's all about because it's just a fantastic test and very helpful for so many reasons, which you'll find out about. But go ahead and take a look at that so that you know what we're talking about when we refer to the Sasser test. Well, for my beginner piano research study, I had four participants in my case study. And these were four wonderful little piano students. None of them had started formal piano lessons yet. They did have some similarities, though. All of them have taken violin lessons since the age of three at our music school. Um, all of them have one to five who take piano from me. So that's kind of a plus. And then all of them are part of the choir that I conduct. I conduct a choir for our academy, and it's a rather high-level choir. They've made professional recordings and been invited to sing at the governor's inauguration in Wisconsin, all kinds of neat things. So this is a very highly gifted, highly motivated group of young people. But they had never taken piano lessons. Let me tell you a little about specifics about them. The first student, she was eight years old, adorable little girl. She had very musical parents. Her mother was a music education major. The second was a nine-year-old boy, and he had musical parents as well. Probably the most musical parents. His mother was a piano performance major. The next girl, she's 10, and her parents were not musical at all. In fact, um, I think the most that they had of music in their background was mom played flute in a band. 
in high school, maybe for a year or two. And she desperately wanted to play piano. Um, student, the 10 year old, she could not wait to start. And she was kind of like me. She would play around on the piano the whole year prior to taking lessons. And then student, the fourth student, she was 11 and she had somewhat musical parents, but she had taken uh, private lessons. She had not taken private lessons, but had had a few lessons with a relative about a year ago. So I did a pretest for them. And on their pretest, their scores, the student number one scored 122 on the Sasser pretest, student number two, 136, student number three, 171, and student number four scored 164. And if you'll notice, all of those scores are below the score for an early beginner pianist. So clearly they were, none of them had learned sight reading on the piano before. Um, they all were scoring below early beginner, which makes sense since they had not taken private lessons yet. Well, each week they each received a 30 minute private lesson with me. And during that lesson, I focused on teaching strong technique, um, helping them develop in all ways, develop their ear. I took sight reading out as a separate skill set and we worked on it using piano marvel exercises and the Sasser test. And they also had the privilege of having a 30 minute helper lesson, which was kind of like a practice teacher who taught them how to journal and practice correctly and divide their songs up and just have a real effective practicing time. Um, they also participated in weekly group lessons, which piano group lessons I, I think are fantastic and important part of piano development. And they all participated in that. And then I gave very specific assignments each week. And their assignments included pieces that were far above their sight reading level, learning how to break them down and practice them correctly. It included Sasser tests, um, sight reading exercises, oral skills, learning songs by ear, all kinds of things. This went on for six weeks. And around week four, I started dramatically noticing that their Sasser scores were improving in a tremendous way. Well, after six weeks, I tested them again. I did the, the post test. Student number one, who was eight years old, she did very well. And in six weeks, she had a 72 point increase and was scoring at 194, which is five points above the early beginner level. Student number two, was scoring at 306. This little boy was incredibly motivated. He had a 170 point increase and he was only scoring 34 below late beginner. So he was far above early beginner. Student number three, are you ready for this? She um, was scoring at 517 a 346 point increase. She went from early beginner scoring below early beginner to scoring right below advanced. And this little girl came down to Chicago and Sean and I presented there and she demonstrated to everyone where she was at. And I wanna say a few weeks have passed since she last demonstrated, she is now scoring above 600 and is doing incredibly well and is frankly shocking me. Um, student number four, she was scoring at 330, which is a 166 point increase, and she was only 10 points below late beginner. So all of them were doing very well. Our average score at the end was a 337, which is an average of a 189 point increase over that period. So I think it was rather clear that this method of teaching students and incorporating the Sasser as part of, a part of the separate skill area of sight reading was definitely helping my students for them in just six weeks to be sight reading at this level frankly floored me and is just been so exciting to see i conducted a paired samples one tailed t-test on the scores and the results were significant at the 0 0.05 significance level which was exciting to me especially only having four participants well you know i just can't only focus on four beginners i knew that if i was going to have an exciting summer of sight reading i was going to have to open it up for all of my students so i declared that this summer was going to be the summer of sight reading and all of my students regardless of what level they were at regardless of how they felt about sight reading i was determined that each one of them was going to improve in sight reading so like i said we declared it the summer of sight reading and i wanted to incorporate what I had learned from my background literature study 
some of the themes being things like learning music like we learn a language, which I already discussed, teaching them to read in chunks and patterns, and then let me tell you, one of the key things that I learned from my research was that to become a great sight reader, you just have to experience sight reading. And I remember as a high schooler, I had a coaching time with one of the main professors at Indiana University. And I, she's known for her incredible accompanying and sight reading skills. And I said to her, why are you such a great sight reader? How can I become like you? And her answer was simply, um, sight read. She said, you just need to sight read. And if you take time and sight read and learn to sight read, you will become a great sight reader, which is something that I have definitely seen in my own life as well. And that's what is so fantastic about the standard assessment of sight reading tests the Sasser test. It gives you all of those experiences, sight reading music. In the past, I would have to go and pull together, oh, I don't know, 50 sheets of music or several books of music to try to sight read. But with the Sasser test, right at your fingertips, you have all of these cuttings from all of these songs at the current level you're at and pushing you to new levels, and it gives you an opportunity to test your sight reading. Well, since I knew that experience would strengthen sight reading, I knew that I wanted all of my students to have an opportunity to do this. So of my students, I wanted to see how they would improve in seven weeks, and 44 of them decided to participate this summer. 32 participated weekly or daily with a sight reading test, and then 12 additional students took the pre-test and post-test only. And I had students of all ages from age 8 to 22. It included new beginner pianists all the way to recent college graduates who had just done their senior recital. So I had a wide range of students, which was pretty exciting. And of the 44 participants this summer, and this is including everyone, including the pre-test and post-test students, we improved 164 points on average. The 32 who consistently use the Sasser daily, they improved 185 points on average. Of the students who took a Sasser test weekly, they improved 111 points on average. But the students who took the Sasser tests every day improved 270 points on average. On these numbers of my 44 students, I conducted a paired samples one-tailed t-test on the scores, and the results were significant at the 0 .01 significance level. So that was exciting as well. So I compared the data, and those who only took the pre-test and post-test but were participating in private weekly and group lessons, they improved 94 points over the seven weeks. Those who took it weekly improved 111 points. The four beginners, like I already mentioned, improved 189 points. Those who took Sasser regularly and consistently practiced, which is an important part of teaching piano, they improved 240 points. But the winner, absolutely, for sure, were those who took Sasser every day, improved 275, 270 points on average. So seeing success across my whole studio was absolutely thrilling. But, you know, I'm and I'm really thankful to Sasser for that. But all of us who are watching this, we're interested in teaching piano, not because we care about data, statistics, and student scores. We're teaching piano because we care about individual lives, and we want to see individual students reach success in every area of their life, and specifically, become fantastic pianists. I know my goal is that every one of my students far surpasses my own level in every area. And we want to see our students grow past their frustrations and become fluent speakers of the musical language. So I want to share four quick students um, with you, four quick stories from four students. These happened this summer, and these are personal stories of how students have improved. Student A is in the eighth grade. She had a 404-point jump. She took the test pretty much every day from June 13th to July 10th. She's been taking piano since she was in fourth grade and recently has been showing more interest in it. And for her first couple of weeks of taking the test, she was scoring very low. She was scoring in about 300, which is below an intermediate student, and sometimes was even dipping into the 200 range. And I was, I was concerned because I knew sight reading was a real struggle for her. 
And what started happening was she was determined. So she started taking the Sasser test a couple times a day and her score began to climb dramatically. And within just a little bit of time, she was consistently up in the 500s and then started just pushing herself and hit an all time high of 732. And she is now scoring between an advanced piano student and a piano major. And the difference of her first score to her highest is 404 points, which is the highest of any of my students. She was absolutely just thrilled by what happened, was so motivated. She began practicing two to three hours a day. And now that she could sight read, she thought, oh, this is fantastic. I can do anything. Her improvisational skills just went through the roof. And in every area, she was motivated. And I'm, I'm super thrilled. She's starting the ninth grade here in a month. And I know we're going to have a fantastic year because all levels of her skill areas are where they need to be. Student H is in the sixth grade, and she has been taking piano for two years. She's a fantastic piano student. I love teaching her. Beautiful technique. Um, every time she plays, she just moves me. Um, she has such a musical style, but she has struggled immensely with sight reading. Sight reading and things like that with academics are not her strong point, and so it's just been so frustrating to her and it's been the only thing holding her back she has the motivation she has the excitement but she's been discouraged about sight reading so this summer she took the sasser several times a day and at the very beginning she was scoring as an early beginner after two years of taking piano lessons and Within a few weeks, she was in the 400s. By the third week, she was practicing around seven days a week and taking the test at least every day and was reaching in the 500 range. She is now in the 600s, and her scores improved 366 points, and she is now absolutely confident in sight reading. You know, recently I sat next to her while she took a test. I watched her take her first test at the beginning of the summer. She hardly could keep it going. I watched her at the end of the summer and was blown away at how just masterfully her fingers moved across the keyboard into all new positions. She had absolutely no problem. She is sight reading at an advanced level. This all happened in just seven weeks. The next student was student B. She's a 10th grader, she's taken piano on and off since middle school. She's a great, she has great improvisational skills, but her sight reading scores were very low. She started out below intermediate became very motivated, begged her mom to buy a MIDI cable so that they could connect their keyboard at home to the internet and to the Sasser test. She started taking the Sasser every day and her score jumped to the 700s, putting her right below a piano major. She had a drastic increase, 373 point jump, and is just so encouraged that she is seeing improvement in all areas of piano. Student S is probably the most exciting little student for me to share about. He was one of my beginners. He was my third grader. And I have to say, he was the only boy in my beginner project with my four students. He was the only boy, and I thought, oh, why do I have to put a little third grade boy in my study? He's going to ruin all my results. He's not going to be motivated. He's not going to want to practice. How is this going to be a help? I'm sure he would far rather be outside swinging a bat well, because we gave him incentives for practicing and because he is incredibly competitive and loves seeing the score increase, the Sasser test was just the thing he needed. And it has caused him to want to practice seven days a week. In fact, he came in one week and every week after and told me, I practiced eight days this week. And I thought, well, how is that possible? And he said, I figured out that if I go home and practice right away, and the next week on the day of my lesson, if I practice before I come, then I'll have eight days of practice. And he was absolutely determined. And he had a setback around three weeks into the study. He broke his thumb playing baseball. But that didn't stop him at all. He was His right arm was in a cast, and he didn't care. He was going to sight read with his left hand, and he was going to practice as many days as he could. And he improved 170 points, and the Sasser test absolutely gave him all the motivation he could possibly want, and I was floored at how much he improved, and he is probably my most excited piano student, and I'm looking forward to a great fall with him this, this semester. Well, in conclusion, I would say the benefits of Sasser overall is that it gives incredible student motivation. You know, it motivates students because they notice, whoa, um, I'm sight reading at a very low level, 
or I'm sight reading, I need to get to this level. And it gives them an objective way to know where they're at. And similarly, it gives an objective assessment tool and it gives you those necessary tools, the opportunity to sight read, gives you the tools to meet goals. And I also, like I said, teach on the college level and I help organize the piano proficiency tests. And the Sasser test is exactly what we need to be able to give our students an objective way to measure where they're at and where they need to be to have um, to be able to graduate with the degree that they're desiring. So in so many ways, this Sasser test and Piano Marvel improved my student sight reading more than I would have thought. And I enjoyed taking it. All of my students enjoyed watching their progress. And I'm thrilled to share with you what all happened this week and this summer. Mary, you're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your research with us. Uh, before we get to some questions for you, um, just wanted to remind everybody to make sure you uh, go ahead and and uh, sign up for the YouTube channel and uh, sign up sign up as one of our subscribers there, so that uh, you will be notified of any uh, amazing uh, broadcast that we do like this with Mary. Um, we're gonna on on every Friday consistently at nine o'clock Mountain Time. We'll have uh, different teacher topics, and so if you have a certain topic that you would like for us to discuss, please uh, send us that information. Uh, this next Friday, we're going to be doing basics: how to create a student account, how to use the reporting functions, how to use the, the general tools from Piano Marble uh, with your students. And so, uh, next next Friday, the exact same time, you'll. Have access to that but uh mary let's jump in and answer any questions that uh, some of our subscribers had there um you know one of the ones i had is um is there more value in it sounds like obviously more value in going from a 30-day sight reading challenge like i started with with my kids and i saw a great results but you're seeing unbelievable results um with uh, the seven or eight week obviously we couldn't do this every day for the whole year because it would probably burn students out but what, right. what are your thoughts what do you what do you think about the seven seven week compared to a different time frame well i think i noticed around the three to four week period that is when the the results were dramatic and so students became incredibly motivated that whoa my score can improve 200 points i might as well keep doing this and so i think putting seven or eight weeks out there for students to do i know for myself my teacher would spend most of the school year preparing for competitions so we were we were learning all three to four sometimes up to seven very high level pieces for competitions and then in the summertime she would focus on sight reading so i think maybe i would encourage piano teachers to take the summer and to focus take sight reading as a major focus and skill area i love it so um what would you do then after your seven or eight weeks of sight reading challenge would you do that every year and then what would you do in between uh for the rest of the year Mm -hmm. So my plan is with my students for this year, this is my first year having done the sight reading emphasis during the summer, my plan this year is to incorporate the sight reading tests at least once a week um, on the college level. I hope to do it monthly just to help the students recognize where they're at. Um, I know that some of the students are so motivated that they plan to, you know, they've gotten their own license and they're at home doing it daily. And those who are excited about it, I'm not going to keep them from doing it all the time. But I, I do plan at least monthly to check in with all the students and to have a bit of a competition going just to see where all of where they all are at. That's great. Yeah, I've, I've told my students at least once a week. Uh, once or twice a week, I think, is a good yeah. uh, good pattern in between. We had a question from Gabby. Um, I'm 30 years old, and will I see such improvements with uh, with their with her, her particular sight reading? What do you think? Do you, do you, did you have any adults in your test group there, and uh, would we expect the same results from an adult? Well, I was part of the test, <laughs> and I improved about 200 points this summer, so that was exciting. Um, I think. <laughs> I think obviously the higher you are scoring on sight reading, the less improvement you're going to see. Um, it won't be maybe as dramatic as going from a beginner level to an advanced level. You'll maybe see yourself go 50 to 100 points up in the advanced level. But um, I think absolutely you'll see improvement 
I know all of my adults were incredibly motivated and often it's the adults who know why they have to know how to sight read. They're put in situations where they're accompanying or they're having to do sight reading on the spot and so they know they have to improve. So they're the most motivated to do it. Um, so I definitely, the results with my adults, I probably had about eight adults in the project and they were just as high as my as my young students. That's exciting. You know, um a disclaimer here, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies, when they say all these benefits for a drug, they say, oh, and by the way, it might kill you. Or, or <laughs> um, what, What's the girl's name that, you, that we tested there at NCKP? Lindsay. Was it Lindsay? Lindsay. Yeah, she went, she has literally had not had a piano lesson before she started two months before this before this actual um, testing period. So within two months, she went from sight reading, what, 130 or something to... Right over 600. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to suggest is that's um, probably, obviously, it's not going to happen with every student. And one of the th factors in that was that she had a strong background in violin since she was three years old. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, the other instruments, as they participate in those, they help significantly on sight reading. But there's, obviously, there's certain people that think, their brains think different ways. And so, you know, we need to have patience with uh, some of those students that maybe are slower in their progress and realize that not everybody's going to grow that fast. And one other thing I wanted to throw in is um, at Piano Marvel, we saw the need for more theory and more writing exercises because in order to sight read, we need to see patterns faster mm -hmm. and easier. When, I mean, when we see something up on the page and instantly we have to play it, our brain needs to be able to quantify those patterns. And so over the last six months, we've been uh, feverishly working on a new um, method book set. And uh, at our pedagogy conference, we release those to the teachers. Um, within the next week, those should be uploaded to the app. So you can print those off for free. And we're very excited about those because we have a lot of writing exercises, uh, writing the notes, so they become very familiar with what the notes are, writing the chords, so they can begin to see those patterns from different levels. And so I really think, you know, for, at least from what my teacher, Dr. Poli, taught me, uh, being able to do some of those theory and writing exercises will, will significantly help in anybody's sight reading. So within the next week, go on to the app, um, download the PDF for the entire level, one, two, three, four, five, or six, and uh, then go ahead and work on some of those exercises in your studios with your students. But uh, uh, Mary, what other questions or thoughts did you have? Well, I just wanted to agree with what you were saying. Um, one of the, a lot of the studies, I should say, that I came across in my background research before I started my action research project mentioned how seeing music in chunks and seeing it in patterns significantly improved your ability to sight read. So it is so important that our students don't just see it as random notes that they have to spell out every time, but rather they get to see where a chord just automatically translates into their mind and they see it in patterns. So learning how to see music in chunks and patterns is absolutely a necessity for becoming a, an advanced sight reader. Yeah. Well, that is fantastic. Um, hey, if anybody has questions for Mary, go ahead and send us an email here at uh, contact us at pianomarble.com. We'll forward those on. And um, if you have other topics you'd like to hear over the next few weeks, please let us know that as well. But Mary, thank you so much for being yeah. on the call. You are amazing. And it's been so inspiring for me to see the progress of your students. We sure appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you on uh, Friday, this coming Friday for the next call.